in a time of uncertainty, when violence fills our land, questions and concerns fill our minds. What's going to happen? What's happening now? Is this the end? Where can one turn to find the answers to the questions within? Join us as we discover the truth in Revelation Revealed. Good morning and welcome to Revelation Revealed. We're excited that you took the time to check out this video today. We're in week number 16. It's hard to believe, week 16. But we're in Revelation chapter 9 today. We're going to be looking at the first 12 verses. So go ahead and get your Bible out and turn there and follow along with us. If you'd like to get a copy of the notes, there'll be notes available. You can download those right off of our website. There's a link in the description below. We encourage you, if you haven't done it already, to subscribe to our channel. That way you'll be notified of any new information or new videos that come out, new content. You'll have that. And so we encourage you to subscribe to our channel, and we'd love to hear from you. Revelation chapter 9, verse number 1. Hopefully you got your Bible out. We're beginning in verse 1. And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth. And to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. Now, in the last chapter, Revelation chapter 8, we also talked about a star falling from heaven, and that one being wormwood, but this one's different. This is an actual person. And so has there ever been something fallen from heaven that was a person? And we know, yes, fallen angels have fallen. In fact, in Isaiah 14, 12, the Bible says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? And so we know here in chapter 9, verse number 1, this is dealing with a fallen angel. It continues on, and it said, And to him was given the key to the bottomless pit. Now, it's interesting to point out that we know who has the keys. In Revelation 1, 18, Jesus said, I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen and have the keys of hell and of death. And so Christ has the keys. So this fallen angel is given the key to the bottomless pit or the place we call hell to open it up. So let's read what happens when he does that. Verse two, and he opened the bottomless pit and there arose smoke out of the pit and the smoke of a great furnace and the sun and air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. And there came out of the smoke locust upon the earth, and unto them was given power, as the scorpions of earth have power. We're going to pause there, but I want you to go back to verse 2. He opened the bottomless pit, and there arose smoke out of the pit, a smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and air was darkened by reason of the smoke of it. You know, it kind of reminds me of Cape Canaveral in Florida when they have the rocket launches. And years ago when they were launching the space shuttles and you would see that five, four, three, two, one blast off and the smoke that would just billow out and would just fill the area and around. That's what happens when this angel opens up the bottomless pit. All the smoke and fire comes out and it covers the earth. It darkens this view, that area is darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. And so these locusts come out that have the power of scorpions. Verse number four, it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, that they should be tormented five months, and their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man. So we're, we're finding out here these creatures. Now we're going to describe what they are here in just a little bit, but for right now we're going to say these demonic creatures from hell come out of hell. 
and begin to afflict mankind. Now you'll notice they're given some restrictions. They are locust-like creatures, but yet they're not eating the green grass. They're not eating the grass that is green. Now, remember back in chapter number eight that the green grass was destroyed under the first trumpets there, the judgment of the green grass. So all green grass was destroyed. So now it's come back. So we're going to talk a little bit more about that as well. You'll notice who they can not hurt. They're like scorpions. They're going to be stinging, but they cannot hurt those that have the seal of God in their foreheads. In chapter 7, we notice that the 144,000 were sealed by God in their foreheads. You'll notice also that they're tormented five months. Now, five months is the typical life cycle of a locust. And so they have locust-like characteristics, scorpion-like characteristics. Now, it gets worse. Let's continue reading on in verse 6. And in those days shall men seek death and shall not find it, and shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. So it's going to be so bad that men are going to wish to die, but they will not be able to. Verse 7, the shape of the locusts. Now, you've seen little locusts. That's not what these things are. Let's look at verse 7. The shape of the locusts were likened to horses. Horses prepared unto battle. And on their heads were as it were crowns like gold. And their faces were as the faces of men. They had the hair, hair as of women. Their teeth were like the teeth of lions. They had breastplates as it were breastplates of iron. And the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots of many horses running to battle. You could hear them coming. Verse 10, and they had tails like unto scorpions, and there were stings in their tails, and their power was to hurt men five months. Verse 11, and they had a king over them. These creatures, these demonic creatures that come out, have a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit. Now, it's interesting when you read that, you would say, oh, they have a king over them. But I want you to know something. In Proverbs 30, verse 27, the Bible says, the locusts have no king, yet they go forth, all of them, by bands. So the locust is driven by his desire for vegetation, but not in this situation. These locusts are commanded by a king, by a general who oversees them. He's the, this king. And now who is this king? He's the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon. One woe was passed. At the end of chapter 8, we talked about there were three woes. Woe, woe, woe. One woe was passed. And behold, there come two woes more hereafter. And so as we're continuing on, now beginning in verse number 1, we talked about this star fallen, this fallen angel. Now, you'll notice he's given the key. He doesn't own the key. He doesn't have possession of the key. He's given the key. Now, some people believe that this angel, this fallen angel, they believe it to be Satan. Some believe it to be a fallen angel that is given a specific task of opening up the bottomless pit. Either way, it is definitely a fallen angel. It could be Satan, but it also could be just a fallen angel who has the responsibility to open up the bottomless pit and then take the keys back and give them back to God. We know in Revelation chapter number 12 that Satan is kicked out of heaven and he is no longer allowed there because right now he daily accuses the brethren before God. So Satan accuses you and I as Christians about our behavior, our actions, our character before God. But in Revelation chapter 12, that's going to stop. He's going to be kicked out. There'll be no more accusing the brethren. Now, it's interesting to point out that in Revelation chapter 20, verse 1, in Revelation 20, verse 1, I'll read that verse to you. It says, And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. Now, verses 2 and 3 tells us what he does. He binds Satan and he casts him into the bottomless pit and he locks him up. 
And so here, there's another angel who comes down. Now, you'll notice the difference between 20 verse 1 and chapter 9 verse 1. Chapter 9 verse 1, the angel falls. In chapter 20 verse 1, the angel comes down. There's references in the Bible to fallen angels, angels falling. And then there's references in the Bible to angels coming down. Angels that coming down represent godly angels, angels that fall representing demonic angels. So we find here that there is this creature. Now, the Bible also tells us that when Satan fell, that a third of the host of heaven, what did it say? Fell with him. And so we've got these demonic forces. So whether it's Satan or whether it's a fallen angel, those there's not a definitive answer. Those are two different possibilities there. But we definitely know it's a fallen angel. Now look what he does. He opens the bottomless pit, and these demonic creatures come out of hell. Now, you say, well, preacher, if hell's in the heart of the earth, how is it bottomless? Well, I don't have time to explain all the scientific details, but with the rotation of the earth and the gravitational pull, it would feel like you're falling constantly and hitting the sides and you never reach the bottom. It's just the spin of the earth and everything else that's there. So it would feel like a bottomless pit. And so you'd never experience the bottom. You never ceases the punishment there. Now you'll notice that these forces, these creatures crawl out of here and they have this desire not to hurt the grass, which is growing back after the first trumpet judgment we saw it was all burned up. All green grass was destroyed. But now green grass has returned here in chapter number nine. So between chapter eight and chapter nine, there's time that goes by. Now we live in the great state of Oklahoma. And in Oklahoma, there have been times I've been driving down the interstate and went, whoa, that field is on fire. What's going on? Now, sometimes it's been a wildfire, but other times it's been this thing called a controlled fire burn. And farmers will do this often. They'll burn off that, and then they'll go back and replant and have great results from that. And so if you've seen that in Oklahoma, you kind of understand what has happened here. The fire destroyed green grass in chapter 8, but now it's starting to grow back, and it's grown back. So there's this green grass that's here. And it, the notice also that it, the 144,000 are spared. It said in verse number four, only those men which have not the seal of God in their forehead. So the 144,000 are untouchable by these demonic forces. And everyone else could have the opportunity to be tormented and hurt, but not killed. It said that they're tormented. They could not be killed. There's no death that comes to them. There's no death for this time frame here. Now, the description of these locusts, they're like horses prepared for battle. That's a large creature a horse is. There's a crown about them. There's humanoid faces. They look like humans in the face, look like a man. They have hair like a woman, teeth like a lion. The lion's teeth are so such amazing. In fact, if a lion loses its tooth, it has what is called marching molars, a description that there's teeth that grow in the back and they move forward when a tooth is missing in the front, they just move forward and replace it. They just keep coming forward and forward. It's an interesting thought. Has nothing to do with what we're talking about, but I just wanted you to know. Teeth like a lion. They had breastplates of iron. The sound of their wings were the sounds of chariots with many horses. You could hear them coming. And the, the sounds that are there. And the tails of scorpions. And they were, had stings in their tails, so they're stinging men. Now, these creatures, they would surround people. They would corner them in and attack them. Now, you're going to hear all sorts of things in this world. You're going to hear people that say, oh, this is a helicopter. It's this creature that this is a helicopter. John couldn't describe it any other way but then a helicopter. And that might be the case, but I don't think so. I think the Bible is being exactly literal in what this is. This is a demonic creature that crawls out of the bottomless pit and attacks people here upon the earth. And so it hurts men, the five months referencing the life cycle of a locust. Now it says there's a king over them. He's the angel of the bottomless pit. This, this king over them who controls these creatures. Now, 
Some say, now this is Satan. And some say that it's Satan in one. In fact, I, I read a couple of different authors who said that, well, because he's got the key, it must be Christ. Well, I don't see Jesus Christ falling from heaven. He would come down. He wouldn't fall down. And we find here that this is definitely in chapter 9, verse 1, a fallen angel. So now we have the king over them, the angel of the bottomless pit. Now, the word abadon and the word apollyon in Greek and in Hebrew, they both mean destroyer. Now, some believe this is to be Satan. And some believe it's a specific angel that's given the task of leading this army of demonic creatures. Now, as a pastor, I, I've been studying and I look at both of these things. Now, Satan is a destroyer. That's what his desire is to do. But every demonic force wants to destroy as well. So I can't say definitively that it is Satan. I lean toward the position that it's a specific angel that is given the control of this army. And this army is under his control. So I lean to that position that it's a specific angel whose name is Apollyon. And that's his responsibility to lead this army of demonic creatures as they attack mankind and they torment men for a period of time. You'll notice it says one woe is past, but there are two more to come. Now in the timeline of Revelation, we're not even to the midway point yet of the tribulation period. We've had the seal judgments, and then the seventh seal has been the trumpet judgments, and we're in trumpet number five. It's getting worse and worse. In fact, we're nearing the middle now. In my estimation of the time frame, we're nearing the middle of the tribulation period. It's coming soon, and after the middle, it gets much, much worse. And so I want to remind you, though, that when you're reading the book of Revelation, it is not always in chronological order. In other words, yes, chapter 7 comes after chapter 8, and chapter 8, then chapter 9, and chapter 9, then chapter 10, but doesn't mean that what's in chapter 10 comes right after what you read in chapter 9. In fact, chapter 10, 11, and part of chapter 12 are in what we call parenthetical chapters. They're inserted for us to understand what is happening in the whole big picture, but they may not necessarily be in the exact chronological order of following these trumpet judgments. But my friend, I want you to understand there's going to come something that happens here on the earth that would be described as hell on earth. And it's this first fifth trumpet that starts to leash these demonic creatures. Yes, we can always interpret scripture from today, but always interpret scripture as scripture for itself. The best commentary on the Bible is the Bible. Now, I'm thankful. I'm going to be in heaven. I'm not going to see these creatures face to face. I'm not going to be stung by a scorpion, locust, with the shape of a body of a horse and a face of a man. I'm not going to have to deal with that. I'm going to be in heaven with God singing praises to him. But those of you who do not know the Lord who may be checking out this video, it's going to be bad. It's going to be awful here on earth. And during this trumpet judgment, it begins to get much, much worse. We want to thank you for taking the time to tune in today to Revelation Reveal. And uh, we want to also wish you a happy Thanksgiving. Enjoy that time with your family tomorrow and uh, eat a slice of pumpkin pie or pecan pie for me. Yeah, it'll be good. We want to thank you for taking the time to tune in. Have a wonderful day, and we'll see you next time here at Revelation Review.